Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to Daily Pitch, Easy Markets Daily Pitch International with me, Badger Slim Charles, because today is the 24th of March, 2023, guys. So, yeah, welcome, everyone. Welcome to Friday. So, yeah, finally, <clears throat> apologies for my voice a little bit. <clears throat> I'm struggling to clear it out this morning. So, uh, yeah, I hope you're <laughs> gonna, this is not gonna kind of intervene too much into my video but guys yeah before uh we jump in into the charts as always uh we need to quickly have a read through our um, risk disclaimer so um the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendations and should not be considered as such this material should not be taken as an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product look i'll give i'll disappear here for a little bit i'll give you a chance to read the rest and we can go from there thank you Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, just a quick update um, and just quick mentioning of our um, Easy Markets you know, website. You can check it out for more information about us, guys. So now then, um, look, let's jump into the charts again. I want to. I'm going to pick up on some some of the previous ones just to see how we are finishing the the week here um and how we can prepare ourselves for next one now mm, the first one is here is nikkei and look i mean if, if at the moment i mean that's uh, yeah it managed to stay above that twenty-seven thousand mark that's great i talked a lot about that this week so in a way going into next week what i'm going to consider here is this level right right there the uh the twenty-seven thousand four hundred and forty zone which basically is the current highest point of the mm, of this week and that's on the future so and uh, if we do clear this area, this barrier, then yes, I'll go higher and I'll go towards the 27,863 or even above that. So let's see how this is going to play out, of course. But again, at this point, yes, I'm, I'm kind of feeling a little bit more excited with the upside because we're st still sitting above the 27,000 mark. If we suddenly start dropping below this area and we break this short term upside support line, tentative, of course. Uh, then yes, I will get a little bit more interested with the downside. So pretty straightforward on this one. Now, uh, jumping into NASDAQ, NASDAQ yesterday um, kind of pushed higher and uh, yeah, made a way, made it its way to the upside, but um, got held near that uh, psychological 13,000 territory again. Um, look, I talked about that 12,950 as well. So, so far this area is providing good resistance. So in a way, Mm, let's keep an eye on it going into next week because again um if we do clear it and we stay above it because not only a clearance is needed but also we would like to see the daily candle the body of the daily candle staying above this area in order to go further north um so in other words i let me just highlight this area for our future reference and then yeah it will be uh easier to monitor this way now uh, this is my target. Like I said, this is my barrier for the upside. I need to see a clear break of it in order to go, um, in order go, in order to go to the upside. Now, in terms of the downside, now first of all, we need to get rid of this level. The twelve thousand seven hundred ninety-two um, got violated in a way, and uh, it didn't really carry much significance. So I think that the uh, better option is to um, to stick. To, well, for, for the downside, the better option is to stick to maybe to this little territory here between the, or should I say, around the twelve thousand five hundred, approximately around there. Um, this um, up downside line needs to go because what I'm going to mark now is I'm going to mark this short term tentative upside support line taken from the low of the sixth of January, and uh, in a way, if we do drop the back below the. 12,500 territory, then yes, I will consider 
a larger correction here to the downside towards this upside support line taken from the low of the uh yeah the 6th of january as i said so some of you might say but hey this is you know we could be forming a nice ascending triangle pattern well you would not be wrong there because again um this idea um i mean this pattern could still be in in the works and uh, for example if we struggle to overcome this barrier straight away then a, a retracement back down here could be possible but again i will i will get comfortable with uh, lower levels if we do um if we do see a a nice drop here uh below that 12 12500 territory so just kind of keep that in mind um look not, there's not much to talk about on, on this one and in general today guys in terms of economic data releases i think it's the canadian numbers coming out uh let me just quickly double check that um yeah so we got the british uh, retail sales numbers uh let me just build, update that and check oh yeah those, those came out better then the retail sales came out better than than expected actually um but still let's say the year on year the four and the headline ones are are on in the negative territory are better than the previous but uh, yeah you got to kind of slowly improving i would say the month on month ones are well into positive territory because again for example for the headline month on month figure the expectation was for a 0.2% uh but it came out at 1.2 percent so hey i'm gonna jump into gbp in a later stage but uh no reaction so far so okay we'll see if maybe the the numbers just came out so maybe we need a little bit of time for you know traders to kind of join in but anyway um in terms of other economic data uh today we have the german manufacturing pmi numbers preliminary ones not the uh, not the headline ones but the preliminary ones um the same story with the uh, uk's manufacturing and services pmis uh, again preliminary um but in terms of the us and canada for example then yeah from the us we'll get the core durable good goods orders that's something for you to keep an eye on and at the same time we'll get the retail sales numbers from canada as well so the core and the headline so let's see how that's going to play out if you're trading uh usd cad then yeah keep your eyes on those so jumping into DAX here very quickly. So DAX, um, look, um, we are retracing back up here. And uh, yeah, in a way, uh, my problem with this one is the fact that we are trading still below the downside line taken from the high of the 7th of March. But at the same time, we're still stuck above all of the EMAs, which could be seen as nice positive thing here so in a way you know as long as we stay above all of the emas then yes there is a good chance for this one to move higher a little bit and uh yes if we could break at least we could break this downside line then that could attract a few more buyers now in terms of the downside now i'm not saying that i'm going to be very very bearish let's say if we do fall below this target of mine here the 15,160. Uh, but I will start examining the move towards the 100-day EMA and back to the 23.6% retracement in the Fibonacci, uh, which is around the 14,800 zone. So again, um, this one could be an, could be an interesting one. Um, but again, a drop below this hurdle is needed. If we get that drop, great, we could go lower. But if we clear this downside line here, uh, then I will start examining uh, some higher levels and I will aim for that uh, 15,700 territory, approximately around there, and then we'll take it from, from there. Uh, dollar index. So, okay, look, I talked a lot about this one this week and uh, basically what I, saw, I talked about previously saying that, hey, maybe this is a nice falling veg pattern and uh it didn't really work out as a veg because the fed did ruin everything here for me but um hey look if, if you do consider this a veg then we're kind of coming back inside of it but hey look it's it's violated you don't lo no longer look at it but now we're, what i'm looking at here is the falling channel uh the falling channel so far has worked out nicely um look as i said before if we continue to trade um inside this pattern uh, then the trend is still to the downside so if you're looking for some higher levels then well certainly a break of the upper side of the falling channel is, is needed um well if we can get that then great i will get a little bit more excited with um 
uh, with the upside here. And uh, yeah, if we can get that break, yes, I will aim for the EMAs. Uh, for the downside in a way, the downside is not off the table. And look, I mean, I, I talked about this level here, the 102.39. If we continue to somehow trade below it, yes, I'll go again to the downside. Uh, even if we push above it, look, if this upper side of the falling channel holds, great. Further declines are possible. Uh, now jumping into gold very quickly guys gold and uh, this one looking quite interesting yesterday we had that pop look okay i talked about this and uh even on wednesday i talked about this i talked about this on thursday and uh, yesterday um so what i said that and actually in the beginning of this week i said that if we climb back above the 1960 territory right here then this could increase the chances for a move back to the psychological two thousand dollar mark and well we got that move we got that test yesterday beautiful um the question here is can we actually overcome this uh two thousand dollar mark and stay above it well that's a very good question i would say but um look unfortunately nobody has a crystal ball but in general the way it's shaping up i'm actually leaning towards that i'm leaning towards the move higher and uh, a move above the 2009 zone right here the one that i have is a barrier um and uh which is the current highest point of march and the current highest point of this year if we clear that one if you clear that 2009 territory guys this will confirm a forthcoming higher high and i and i need to jump into a monthly and we could start then aiming for the highest point of 2022 or the highest point of 2020 um look the issue that i have with these two levels just a slight one um if we apply again technical analysis and we draw something like this then we can see that for example our target becomes somewhere near the 2064 65 um approximately around there so again look i will zoom out here and i'll try to grab this one a little bit better maybe on the daily i think it will be a little bit easier um let me just bear with me ah oh, it's a difficult one okay guys uh, there we go so so something like this basically so basically the target here becomes the 2065 again will this work out or not let's wait and see but at this point look i'm just gonna i'm gonna take an, a, a simplistic approach and uh in general guys don't overcomplicate the markets the markets are complicated enough already so you know don't overcomplicate your head just just the most important have your stop losses in place your um you know you position yourself and make a logical or try at least to make a logical decision um I, we know that the markets sometimes are very unlogical illogical or whatever you want to call it um but um in general mm, yeah try to be on your side at least uh but um hey look at this point the my logical approach is the if we do get that push uh back above the 2000 mark yes i will slowly start aiming again to the 2009 territory if that gets cleared well guess what uh further acceleration to the upside could be possible um now the problem here is that we don't ha really have a kind of a clear area clear resistance level uh if we want to take some previous uh, historic peaks or something like that or lows we don't really have that um and so that's why we we only have something like this uh where we had a rapid acceleration and then a rapid decline so yeah um again maybe going back all the way here maybe this could help us out here uh, let me actually grab this line let me recycle um always recycle guys there's a hidden message for you there um there we go let me just grab this peak um okay this is just uh oh this is gonna be a pain uh yeah let me just i think i'm gonna zoom in quicker this way so there we go this one the the, the 2050 very nice target very good potential area of resistance um look this is gonna be my next target if we do actually clear the 2009 zone so and this is what i'm going to be aiming for um for now and uh yeah uh, if we do start falling back below the 1960 territory i'm leaning to the downside 
uh silver very quickly on that one look silver is uh spectacular as well i would say so um actually i never never checked which one did perform much better let's say from the re from the peaks that we sorry from the drop that we had here in the beginning of march all the way to right now uh we have gained around what 16 17 percent on silver what's the situation on gold actually um from so from the peak oh sorry from the drop what's what, what's my thing today uh from the drop from the in, in the beginning of march and all the way here actually silver i would say percentage wise yes not i wouldn't say but actually it is it's a much better uh performer so yeah look at this guys uh silver is yeah beating you know not one and a half times let's say uh gold in terms of performance you know from the lows here from the march uh, beginning of march lows so okay um look in general uh, what should i say would i say like let's continue uh chasing it look at this point uh, i'm gonna stick to the upside still because again um at the, for now if it if it continues to trade somewhere above uh this territory here the one that i mentioned previously the uh 22.60 zone approximately around there um if we continue to trade above it then yes i will continue aiming to the upside even if we do retrace back down so as long as we stay above this area i will go higher of course of course um the uh the area right here let me just get rid of some of the uh, levels here so um the area right here becomes quite interesting as well the the area near the emas um but we'll get to that point look i have something in mind here and probably some of you already see it as well but um i don't want to over complicate it over complicate things yet i'll pick up on this at a later stage because what i'm mm, oh actually you know what it's friday let me over complicate things for you here basically what i'm saying is that look i'm curious to see if we're going to get a nice little hold up somewhere around here near that 23.11 12 or in general actually there is no clear level here because look we in general we have kind of an area uh resistance area here so yes so 23.30 could also be the in, an interesting one so i'm watching this whole uh resistance area because as you can see here back in what uh january the beginning of january or actually throughout january yes uh, this area provided fantastic uh, support um so let me just grab a uh, rectangle here so this one i'm talking about this so in a way if we hold around somewhere here um and then we start declining back down my it's interesting gonna it's gonna be interesting to see if we can actually decline somewhere closer to this territory the 22.29 uh and uh yeah um if we do um if we do uh see that then maybe we'll get ourselves a nice little uh head and shoulders pattern but again too early to talk about that we we haven't even finished the head so you know uh let's uh let's wait and see so in other words look if you're if you're aiming higher i would say yes there is still potential for the upside but be very careful around this whole area range i cannot call it the area resistance range i mean uh because again if, if it holds uh, a bit of a decline could be possible now something that i don't look at very often but i think i'm gonna do this um occasionally now let's say um something exotic for friday uh because again it's it does it whatever presents uh itself or could present itself with a nice opportunity i mean from the technical perspective and uh you know looking at this one corn uh maybe something that you don't look at very often but hey guys you can trade that here on easy markets um uh so you can pick up on that one if you wish but um look um but in general this is available yes on our platform and together with some other commodities and tradable commodities so let's let's have a look at what's happening here and basically here i would say it's quite interesting we are seeing a potential inverted uh head and shoulders pattern now um in a way um yes it could be seen as a uh, bullish indication but still a clear uh break of the uh neckline of 
so-called neckline because we're still forming the right shoulder guys so it's not really guaranteed yet but once if if we start breaking the 600, 642 territory now that's where it could become a little bit more interesting we could aim for these emas here and then we could take it from there um we could then target uh, this little area of resistance near the downside line taken from the high of the 10th of october could be a nice potential target but um hey um let's uh let's wait and see uh look <clears throat> in general i i do like this idea of a potential inverted head and shoulders uh, but again, I need to confirm that, that uh, a confirmation break is required because if suddenly this commodity starts dropping somewhere below this territory, the 622, well, I will scrap the whole, uh, unless it's a false breakout. That's another thing. Um, I'll scrap the whole idea of inverted head and shoulders, but if we, dro if we drop and, and stay below the 622 territory, Yes, I'll go lower again. I'll aim for the uh, current lowest point of March near the 606 zone, and then we will take it from there. Now, but again, as I said, I am kind of leaning a little bit towards this scenario. But of course, let's wait and see. Uh, confirmation break is still needed. Now, jumping into oil, WTI oil, guys, um, looking at the picture here, you look at this. Uh, the downside line provided good resistance. Now, together with that psychological 70 level, and uh, yeah, the question now is, can we still get a nice move here to the upside? Well, uh, yes, we yesterday we had that nice false breakout, uh, but um, again, you can see that the um, you can see that basically here um, we are still. It seems like the bears are still not giving up. Um, and still, it, we be, it seems that everybody believes in the dollar recovery. Um, okay, look, I believe that oil might go lower. But again, this is only my opinion. Um, in general, I don't know. It's a, it's a tricky one. So as long as, look, I'll, I'll probably take an, a, a simplistic approach here as well. Because as long as it stays below the psychological 70 territory, I'll continue aiming to the downside. If it's now, it's now you can see that it's trying to break back above it. But again, yesterday we had a nice break, but it was a false breakout. So again, the same story could happen today if we, you know, push it higher again. But um, by the way, this downside line, I think it's in the way. I think it's actually better to stick around to the psychological 70 territory. So if we stay below the 70 zone, dollar zone, then yes, I will go lower. If we push a little bit higher and stay above this i will aim for this upside support line the one that we broke previously and i talked about this guys so i'm going to aim for that uh area uh litecoin jumping into a few cryptos so it's kind of playing the chasing game or like you know yeah the chasing game basically it's like um it broke the downside line okay great wonderful i mean that's that's wonderful i would say and the, yesterday we had that pop uh look it made a nice move here uh we cleared some key resistance barriers like for example this one the 88.54 um now the question here is can, where can we go next well to be honest next are my targets here the 98.33 or even the uh 105.68 zone so which is the highest point of february or in other words the current highest point of this year we're uh, we're going towards a nice target here but let's again let's see if we can reach that actually because okay um it seems like some cryptos are trying to have their moments right now um ripple had the moment uh, recently this week so i'll pick up on that one in a bit and uh yeah uh it seems like now litecoin is trying to kind of you know do the same here and uh trying to kind of uh, you know perform something or let's say attract uh more buyers but again let's wait and see um excuse me let's wait and see and uh for now i'm cautiously bull i'm well, actually I'm, I'm bullish on this one um i'm aiming for the 98.33 and then for the 105.68 after that i'll take it from there if it somehow this is another thing for the downside if it somehow falls back below the downside line and actually falls below all of the EMAs on my daily chart. Now, that's where I'm going to get a little bit more excited with the downside, especially if it also breaks this upside line. But I think that if it already drops below the, uh, the all the EMAs, it will be already below this upside support line as well. Um, oh, I can see there in the chat room, uh, Ian, uh, Ian Koech, uh, Koech, Koech. Um, I don't know what, which way it's correct, but uh, yeah, good morning to you too. 
Uh, good morning to everybody else again as well who's joining in. So I hope everybody's having a wonderful start of Friday. Look, it's Friday, guys. I mean, we should not be over trading, that's for sure. Um, but hey, coming back to the charts and coming to my one of my favorite uh, cryptos right now, Ripple. Um, look, this one's attractive and this one's interesting. And at the same time, look, we got back inside the rising channel. We, we kind of briefly broke through it. And what you're going to see on a weekly night, a nice, nice, beautiful falls breakout. So to be honest, I want to see now how next week is going to play out. Because if this is going to stay below this upper side of the rising channel, um, then yes, I will move a little bit back down. Uh, back down towards the uh, the 200 day EM initially, or maybe even all the way to the lower side of this rising channel, guys. So let's keep an eye on this one. Uh, for the upside, I need to see a clear push back above the upper side of the rising channel, and then we could take it from there. AUDJPY, just a quick update. So, boom, uh, mission accomplished. Uh, we have reached our target. Now we can rest. Uh, now we can, see, or I should I say, you know, if you're prepared for the next uh, opportunity, let's see if we can squeeze something out of this one. Basically, the thing that I was talking about, uh, the fact that we we fell below the 88.55 territory and we stayed below it. And uh, then, yes, I said that my next target is this full highlighted zone. Well, look at this. We managed to reach that. Great. What's next? next well next i think the the shift of the the arrow has to happen and this is how i'm going to do it so with the the, uh, the downside scenario i need to see the daily candle staying below it because again this is quite interesting um at the moment i mean this is a very important key support zone if we can clear and stay below it then yes i'll go further south and uh, my next target will be around here uh, this one right there, guys. Uh, yep, uh, the 84.60. Uh, good potential target. Of course, if you're looking for something in before that, then keep your eyes on the target here, the 85.89. And this is going to be a nice good target as well. Initial target. So, And then we can initially aim for that one. But if we uh, if we clear it, then yes, further, further declines are possible. Now, to support the bulls. Uh, to support the bulls, first of all, this downside line, we can get rid of it. Um, this line here, this hurdle, we can adjust it. I think it's, uh, yeah, I think this is, yeah, this is a tricky one, actually. I think it's going to be easier to have a look at this target, the 89 zone. So, yeah, that's the Wednesday's high. Um, good, good potential area, maybe. But again, this is the... Hmm. Don't really like it actually. I like I want to have something a little bit closer than that. Ah, there we go. So the 88.39 could be a nice target because again it was an inside swing low of the um of my of actually of no oh, that's Sunday's candle, that's the futures, yeah. So <clears throat> look, it was a nice support here, and uh, uh it's the high uh near the high of yesterday. So if we push back above this area above this 88.39 i will consider a larger correction here to the upside and who knows maybe we could actually do something bigger than that but again for that i need to see the markets re, uh, retracement retracing so the indices pushing back up uh, so that people would be stopped with so that people would stop jumping into the yen um but yeah um at this point guys i'd say um i'm kind of cautiously bearish here so yeah just uh kind of uh for now just kind of like i said uh keep your eyes on this territory if we yes we had already a falls breakout here but if we get another drop and stay below it then yes i'll go further south nzd usd guys so this one i picked up recently as well so i'm still watching the two barriers look i'm not gonna spend too much time on this one because it's still oscillating around my uh, EMA is here, so I need to see a clear drop below the 8, 0 0.6167. Uh, in order to go lower for the upside, I need to see a push above the 0.6283, something like that, around here. And then we could go uh, a little bit to the upside. So USD CAD, of course, watching USD CAD today. Uh, we do have those numbers coming out from uh, Canada. Uh, let me just quickly double check what's the expectation. So yeah, the re retail sales, the core and the retail sale sales, uh, the month-on-month -month numbers are expected to 
rise a little bit so yeah okay that's gonna be interesting to see what's gonna happen there because if those are gonna rise maybe we could see a bit of you know canadian dollar strengthening just maybe like an impulse or something like that because again i think that it will uh remain still more um kind of or subject to movement in oil uh so yeah uh, but looking at the picture here what i'm seeing right now it's leaning a little bit more towards the upside and look uh we have this downside line we're currently flirting with it if we can clear it nicely then yes i will go uh, a bit more to the upside and one of the levels that you can keep an eye on is somewhere around here guys i think we can just yeah the 1.3750 i think that's going to be a little bit better than some other ones so mm, so yeah um at this point like i said i'm keeping an eye on that 1.3750 for the upside um, but i will start already looking at some higher levels if we do get that push above the 1.3750 um, and then we can target the um the 1.3862 um oh yeah i can see there in the chat room twizzy love crypto <laughs> you hi hi you uh right back at you right back at you guys I, I hope you're having a wonderful start of friday as well um right okay guys look let's have a look at what's happening here with the downside scenario this is what i didn't finish uh so yeah uh 1.36 30 30 zone this is to be honest yes it's a low of yesterday and yes i do understand there is a lot of room here but to be honest i mean honestly i would rather wait for that one because this whole area hold all this area right here it's not really sparkling with me here i mean it's uh i prefer to see a drop below the 1.3630 in order to go lower because at the same time maybe i'll get my drop below the, the 50 day ema and if that's the case i will go a little bit more to the downside i'll aim for that 100 day ema and i'll go from there but the fact that we're currently flirting with the downside line that's of course uh yeah that's kind of uh tickling the bulls a little bit and uh, let's see if they enjoy it and uh, they pick up on all that so yeah let's wait and see guys uh gbp usd so as i said uh, we had the numbers that came out from uk today the uh, inflation uh, sorry inflation which uh the retail sales numbers came out today um yeah and also we're watching today the com composite manufacturing services pmis preliminary ones coming out today as well from uk so let's keep an eye on down but in general look i will stick to my game plan honestly i i've been talking about this whole week and uh basically mm, i was talking about this 1.2270 zone so far it's working out hey you know what as, as, as long as the bicycle is moving and working you know i'm not gonna fix it so i'm just gonna stick to my plan and uh, as long as we stay above the 1.2270 i am leaning towards that upper side of the range because don't forget that we're overall in a big big range uh for the downside yes to drop below the all the emas would be needed gbp aussie there we go slowly but steadily steadily you know we managed to bre break that area again several times we've broken it actually already so but we managed to stay above it so that's great that's wonderful what's next well as long today's friday of course it's a it's a day when uh, you get some sort of like one-way traffics and you know like and what i mean by that is just the markets sometimes if you for example you do like uh counter trend trading uh that's a good a bit could be a bit of a difficult one on friday because friday sometimes it just kind of moves and that move and moves um so but again let's wait and see let's see we don't have many kind of we don't have much kind of important news coming out uh so let's see how that's going to play out of course but look at this point i am leaning towards the upside as long as we stay above this whole highlighted zone if we start falling back below it i'll take a neutral stand if we fall below the 1.8078 i'll i'll start considering uh, much lower levels here maybe a move towards all the way towards this upside support line taken from the low of the 2nd of february uh, gpp cad just we got the update as well yesterday i picked up on this one and look, I uh, talked about this and I said that, hey, 1.60, what's the, what was it, what was it here? 1.6850, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, one, I hate when it's piling up like this. Uh, all my lines are piling up. So 1.6850, yep, that's the one. There we go. 
Uh, we're currently flirting with it. Uh, let's see if we can actually, you know, clear it and we can go higher. Um, at the moment, like I said, yes, I am sticking to that idea. But if suddenly we start uh, dropping back below this um, this territory, um, and actually, actually, to be a little bit more on the safe side, if we drop somewhere below this zone, uh, this territory, the 1.67, I think, uh, I think this one would be better. 1.6743. If we do drop back below it, then yes. I will go uh, to the downside towards that 50 day EMA and towards that upside support line. Simple as that. Uh, now, Euro knock again, as I said, Friday will be my exotic uh, pairs, exotic commodities uh, day. So, yeah, look, I, I like to look at this. And look, in the beginning of this week, I told you, I talked about this and I said, that, hey, if we pop above the 11.48, uh, uh, this will confirm a forthcoming higher high and we could go higher. But because we were kind of stuck in this, <clears throat> excuse me little range here um i said that hey if we do drop below the 11.37 38 zone or somewhere around there well guess what this could open the door towards some lower levels and so far it's working out look my next target is the 11.15 i'm still targeting that level um i want to see how it's going to play out here of course the fact that oil strengthened uh, playing a key role here in this pair uh, as we know the norwegian economy heavily depends on uh oil um so which which it exports um but uh look at this point yeah i mean like i said i'm I'm targeting the downside i am leaning a little bit more to the downside um again also a slight weakening of the euro is helping out this whole combination here so that's wonderful so that's great um let's see if we can reach that target or maybe even the 50-day ema or maybe even the upside support line but again Let's go slowly on this. Let's, let's not rush into anything. If we somehow start reversing sharply back above the 11.38 territory, I'm taking a neutral stand because maybe we could be preparing for a move higher. But for the higher move, we need to see a clear break above the 11.48 zone. Uh, Euro GBP. I'm drifting back down. Uh, and we're now back below the 50-day EMA. Look, as long as we stay below it, I'm going to aim for the 100-day EMA here, uh, which is on my chart roughly around the 0 0.8795. So 0 0.8795 could be my next target. But if that gets cleared, um, yes, next target is the 200-day EMA for me. And finally, EURUSD, guys. So, yeah, we're seeing a bit of a retracement, so that's fine. Look, look how well this 1.09.25.26 territory provided resistance. I talked about this level. Um, and I said that this is what we're going to be aiming for. And, uh, yeah, um, we could see maybe that little retracement. So far, so good, honestly. So far, everything's working out perfectly here. Um, now the question here is, can we see a rebound from this 1.08 zone? Well, this is something that I would like to see. I don't know if the market is going to give me that, but, you know, it doesn't always give me what I wanted, uh, what I want. So, hey, um, at the moment, I would say I'm keeping an eye on that 1.08 territory. Maybe it's not going to happen today. Maybe, I mean, I'm talking about, let's say, a rebound from this area. Maybe it's going to go into next week for that. Um, but today, yes, I'm watching this area. If we fall below the 1.08 zone, yes, 1.0760 is my next target. And then the 50-day EMA. That's what I'm going to be uh you know aiming for later on if we do drop below the uh the 1.08 territory so far i'm aiming for that one only let's see if we can actually you know uh we can rebound from this territory i can see there in the chat room uh ian uh gbp jpy okay uh let me just quickly have a look at that one uh let me just pick it up hey by the way guys if you wish um if you want me to pick up on some instruments that you want honestly drop me a message all the time and like i said either i'm gonna if i have time i will pick up on the same session or if i don't have time then i'll pick a pick up on that one next session so just yeah let me know uh gbp jpy so yeah this one's interesting because again looking at the picture here i talked about this by the way uh, this week and uh, look after we rallied nicely here tested the downside line and then we are now drifting back down so basically what we're seeing here we're seeing that the pair is coiling up a little bit so we're still above this upside line here taken from the low of the 13th of january but at the same time we are um we are below this downside line we're above this upside line we're down we're below this downside line so we're getting into a bit of a squeeze 
Uh, we're getting into a bit of a squeeze. Uh, again, personally, I what I would like to see here, but again, as I said, the market doesn't always give me what I wanted to see, what I want to, what I want to have. Uh, it, what I would like to see here is maybe more jumping around here, bouncing around up and down, up and down, getting closer to the kind of to the apex here of the the triangle, the potential triangle here. Um, and then it would be quite interesting to wait and see for a nice breakout here, either to the upside or to the downside. But look, if we get closer right now to this upside line, maybe we're not even going to get that uh, nice, um, you know, kind of coiling up moment here. Maybe we'll just break the upside line straight away and fall below the 159.21 and then we could take it from there. Um, certainly, certainly I have an area here that I'm watching because I have a bunch of these support levels. So that's why it's really difficult to say to, or to, to point out a certain level in this situation. But um, if it starts breaking the upside line and then falls below the uh, 159.21, that's from where I'm going to start looking at some lower levels. I'm going to start aiming further south. And then, of course, is the 158.96 territory and then so on and so on. Then the last one I have here, 158.56, marked by the current lowest point of March. If that gets cleared, uh, this will confirm a forthcoming lower low. And guess what? More sellers could join in here and drag this one all the way towards the 157.53. Or even the 156.73 territory right there. So let's keep an eye on that one, guys. Um, like I said, at this point in time, I am uh, leaning a little bit more towards the downside. But again, only towards this upside line for now. Because I want to see if we're going to get a rebound or not. Um, if we're going to get that rebound, great. I would like to see the, the pair kind of starting to, you know, to kind of move sideways a little bit. And start uh, coiling up and moving towards the apex. Uh, but for the bulls, uh, to satisfy the bulls, I would probably say a break of this downside line is needed. And uh, to be honest, even if we, I mean, if we're going to break the upper, uh, upper side of here or the downside line here, um, we would already be placed above all of my EMAs and potentially more uh, buyers could join in here. So let's keep that in mind. So in other words, the arrow should stand like this. There we go. So guys, um, yeah that's that's kind of it if you don't have any more questions guys i mean i don't know nothing's coming through here on my live chat but in general i would like to say a massive thank you all uh that you managed to join this week to my video to my my webinar s webinars uh but yeah i really appreciate that guys thank you very much for for all this and it really means a lot uh, so like I said, this, uh, we've started on the 8th of March and, uh, yeah, so we're still testing a few things in general to see how all this is, is going to go, but, um, hopefully you're liking these. I mean, hopefully you, hopefully you're enjoying these videos. Um, but yeah, um, thank you very much for that guys. And, uh, if you want to catch, um, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. If you want to catch me on Monday, as always, 7 o'clock GMT time, guys. Um, yep. But, uh, oh, actually, sorry. Not 7 o'clock GMT time. 6 o'clock GMT time. We're, we're turning our, our clocks. Uh, there we go. Yes, yeah, 6 o'clock GMT time. Um, so, yeah, let's see. Let's see how, uh, how we're going to get around that. But uh, 6 o'clock GMT time. Yes, guys, uh, next week um uh, monday monday i'm hoping to see you here at my uh, easy markets daily pitch international like i said if you're uh check out our website for more information in general about about us um if you have any questions you can always um uh oh by the way sorry uh ian um, can uh, you call me ian uh, okay i'll call you ian uh so yeah nice to nice to nice to meet you um so yeah um like i said if you have any questions or anything like you can always drop us an, e an email uh you can e always even drop me an email if you wish or you can get in touch with uh easy markets and you know can, then we can have a uh, have a chat if you wish but um look uh, thank you very much for watching and listening i'm not gonna spend uh, any more of your time and use any more of your time thank you very much guys and uh yeah i'll see you on monday six six o'clock gmt time thank you very much and bye bye
Uh oh. You just broke a digital image, cursing us all to seven years of market volatility. Undo by subscribing to our channel.